I'm Jen Perry from North Carolina. I have a five month old Harlequin Macaw named Tegan. And this is my free flight journey. When I got Tegan, I knew I wanted to free fly her. I had been watching bird tricks for quite some time, had actually had a number of consults, and was working with you guys on a couple of my other birds, but they weren't ready for free flight, and I knew I wanted a macaw, and I wanted to see her in the sky. So I had her for less than a week when I reached out to you guys, and Talking to Dave, he said, hey, we're going to Pahrump in two months. You can go. And I was like, what? That seems so fast. So, sure, why not? Let's go. So we started training, and it was this roller coaster ride of her being a baby bird, me not knowing what I'm doing, Dave coaching me through it and keeping me on track. But there was a point where we just weren't progressing. And we were 14 days out from when I would be need to leave for the trip because I was driving from North Carolina to Nevada so that's a week on the road Dave actually said during the consult after reviewing the film from the week before okay you're gonna have to pull it together or it's just not gonna happen so he focused me in on what we needed to do to accomplish that last week of training and it was either going to be on or it was going to be off and I was not sure really if I was ready if she was ready was, I was leaving it up to the experts and we did exactly what he said we mastered perfect recall it clicked we were outside in the batting cage and it all came together and when we met seven days later Dave's like yeah I think you're ready and I was like yeah I actually think we are so um, it was a absolute roller coaster but it was awesome
how to go set up a batting cage. Shut up, Jake. We had a hurricane in the middle of it all. It was great. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. So the biggest struggle that I had uh, with Tegan on this journey was we didn't know each other. I had her literally for a week. We were still working on hand feeding and trying to get that down as well as personality. She's my first macaw and my first free flight. So it was all this combined together where we just had to learn as we went along and get to know each other as well. So that for me was my biggest challenge, not knowing what I didn't know about her and the process. Um, we overcame that by being focused. And it, when it got down to the end of our training where it was do or die, we dialed in she was focused on me at this point and I was focused on her and that connection just clicked and it just turned on and we were able to communicate and understand each other a whole lot better. Um, seriously touch training when I started that because it wasn't at the start. Like I'd only had her for a week. So she's had zero training at that point. Uh, we went right into flight and as part of that uh, we started doing touch training to get her moving around some foraging trees that I had her launching off of. And that really helped her understand, oh, I get that. Okay. It's not just about flight. It's a, it's a little bit more. And we started communicating in general, overall, a whole lot better. So during the training, in mid-training, um, I decided that I wanted to change the floors in my home. So I had the flooring delivered and it was right in the flight path. So she had to normalize around and over this new obstacle that hadn't been there before. And then we had, <laughs> we had strangers in our home uh, for two days which forced all of my birds to be out on our sun porch so I lost two days of training um, plus all of the disruption of being in a new new location close proximity to all the other birds and then new flooring um, so it was the first day she was flying over those new floors she was doing this weird twitching thing she was seeing something that she hadn't seen before it, a reflection of some kind or shine off the floor because I had carpet and I went to uh, vinyl plank flooring and it it took her a little while to get used to that and to calm down and for us for us all to calm down because it's incredibly disruptive to have strangers in your home even though the outcome was great. You know, the biggest lesson that I learned is to trust the process. You guys are experts. Dave analyzed my videos uh, over the week, each week, broke it down, identified the things that were working, pointed out the things that were not, told me what not to do ever again, and then modified, gave me specific tasks for the next week. And just segmenting it that way, um, in the very beginning, Tegan and I struggled. The first week, I just didn't think it was gonna happen at all, ever, no way. She was here, she was there, she was never coming to me. Um, and once, after we met, Dave and I met for the first 
weekend consult and I was able to just see this in segments of a week at a time and break it down, I was much more willing, mentally, to trust the process and just listen to the experts. Trust in the bird. This is what she does. I just have to figure out how to communicate these things to her. And Dave helped me do that, and that's how we got here. So the outside experience combined with the training that it took to get here has been all in all a complete roller coaster ride that has been the ups and downs of every emotion but so much excitement to see her finally outside in the air enjoying herself today she had so much fun she actually wanted to do that and she wanted to come to me it was her choice and she did that over and over again, not just once. So that was really awesome. And seeing her build her skills in real time over this trip um, has been very rewarding. Mm -hmm. All right, one, two, three, go! Those two look really similar in this guy. They are. Some of the Rachel's pictures. Hello. There we go. Keegan! Oh. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> a little cross traffic. Yay, yay! Whoa! Good girl! I'm starting to think Opal's boy. She landed on a purple. Oh, she did? It's like, Mom, I'll meet you up here. Oh, Rico got buzzed. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Miss Exploratory. <laughs> Where are you going? Because she definitely built some skills leading up to this, flying in the house and flying in the batting cage, but she hasn't experienced wind like this. And she hasn't experienced sun like this. So this has been very rewarding and it fills my heart to see her so happy. I chose free fly because every time I watch one of your students free flying for the first time. I was crying. Every video, I was crying. I'm gonna cry now. I wanted to see that for myself. And give that to my bird. It's funny, I really thought, because I get so, or had been getting so emotional watching your students and watching their journeys and their rides, um, I thought the first time that I saw Tegan in the air, I was going to just lose it. I thought I was just going to fall out, y'all were going to have to catch my bird, there was no way I was going to hold it together. This is the first time I fell apart because it's just so awe-inspiring. You, for me, I love watching animal behavior, so watching her in the air, it, I don't know, it was different. Um, but if I sit down and think about it, talk about it, then it kind of all snowballs and hits me. So, weird. Did I question my decision to free fly after Opal went for a 5.3 mile flight on day one? The answer is no, not for a second. I have 
confidence in a bird in general, including my own, but a bird in general's ability to do what they do. And what they do is they fly. And it's a learning process. Kids fall down when they're learning to walk. Birds get caught in a gust when they're learning to fly. And it's just part of the learning process. So for me, no, it didn't knock me back at all. I wanted, I don't know if I want to say that, but I wanted Tegan to experience a little bit of a rough ride. I don't want it to be easy for her. I want it to be challenging. I want her to get the wind under her, push her, make her struggle. She'll get better that way. And um, we saw a little bit of that today where we were in 10 mile an hour gusts and she had to work a little bit, but she did it. And she got stronger and smarter and better for it. So um, it didn't give me pause after Opal flew off. Plus we got her back. Yeah. Get Halo going.